The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Please join me in our opening sentences. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For to us, a child has been born. To us, a son is given. Almighty God, your Son was presented in the temple and acclaimed the glory of Israel and the light of nations. Grant that in him we may be presented to you and may reflect his glory in the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. God comforts his people and calls on them to prepare for redemption. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep.
Christ's birth and kingdom are foretold by Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born unto us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
the prophet Micah foretells the glory of Bethlehem. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The angel Gabriel visits the blessed Virgin Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent to God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born holy. He will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
St. Matthew tells of the birth of Jesus. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Joseph go to Bethlehem. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world shall be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the, da to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and whom was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn.
the angel announces the birth of the Savior. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. be seated. Jesus is presented in the temple. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated to holy as holy to the Lord, 
And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord. When was the last time that you felt awe or wonder? When was the last time that you felt or thought that something was mysterious? <coughs> when was the last time that you felt some amount of amazement at God? Socrates, that most eminent of philosophers in ancient Greece, is quoted as having said, Wonder is the beginning of wisdom. I have no reason to doubt the great intellect of Socrates, but his little quote has me thinking that wonder and all are crucial ingredients to something other than wisdom. All and wonder are crucial to a vibrant life, and especially a vibrant life with God. Over the last two or three weeks, I guess, I've tried to keep track of how often or how seldom I hear people say that they are amazed or awed. And I've come to the conclusion that, well, I fear that many of us no longer feel much wonder at all. Many of us no longer wonder at the soft flight of a monarch butterfly. Many of us no longer marvel at the beauty of a sunset or find ourselves awed 
by the love we feel for our children or grandchildren. And so I wonder, if we cannot be awed by these things that we see, how will we ever be amazed by Jesus who we cannot see? The amazement at Jesus begins early in his life when he is only eight days old. I just read in our gospel lesson that the quote, child's father and mother were amazed by what was being said about him. And yet, it's my opinion that Simeon, Simeon is the one who is transformed by amazement. Because Simeon is transformed into a vessel of praise to God. Years ago, when I was a river guide in the mountains of North Carolina, I was off with a friend climbing a mountain called Table Rock. It's about a 400-foot slab of granite. Maybe some of you have been up there and seen it. Well, we began our climbing expedition early in the morning. The sun was just barely up. The dull glow of the day was beginning to dawn. <clears throat> As we started to climb, we got this beautiful and sweeping view of the green valley below. The trees were swaying in the breeze. There were small patches of fog hanging over the valley. On the horizon, a delicate orange sun inched its way into a purple morning sky. Later, on the ground, my friend mentioned to me how amazed and awed he was at the beauty of the earth. And my friend, though not religious at all, in fact he was a self-proclaimed agnostic, my friend was speaking religious words. You see, awe and amazement are words that belong to us, to the spiritual, to the religious those who live by the mystery of God. Since the very beginning of history, God has always been the foundation for wonder. And without wonder, without awe, without amazement, there is no religion, at least no biblical religion. From the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation, awe is the primary feeling and thought when people relate to God. This is an awe and an amazement shared by Simeon, by Mary, and by Joseph. I don't know how you're feeling on this first Sunday after Christmas. And I don't know about you, but I would like to feel a sense of wonder when I think about Jesus. I want to be amazed by God when I read scripture. Maybe you feel this way too. Maybe you, like me, would like to marvel more at life, marvel more at Jesus, but find for some reason that you come up short of amazement. And so, and so maybe Simeon can offer a starting point for living with greater wonder. Simeon must have paid attention to the little things in life. Even an eight day old child he must have paid attention to the little things because attention is the mother of wonder and praise. 
If you want to marvel more at God, then make yourself watchful. Pay attention. Because God, God never ceases to amaze those who look to be amazed. To God be the glory, now and forever. Amen. may be seated. Hear now the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so too we might walk in newness of life. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate this holy sacrament. On behalf of the session, I present Richard Don DeCenzo, 
son of Susan and Dan DeCenzo, to receive the sacrament of baptism. Susan and Dan, do you desire that Richard be baptized? Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live that Christian faith and to teach that faith to Richard? Do you? Laura and Tom, as Richard's sponsors, do you promise through prayer and example to support and to encourage Richard to be a faithful Christian? Do you? Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and to nurture Richard by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging him to know and to follow Christ and to be a faithful member of his church. Do you? Through baptism, we enter the covenant God has established. Within this covenant, God gives us new life, guards us from evil, and nurtures us in love. In embracing that covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. Susan and Dan, in presenting Richard for baptism, I ask you, therefore, to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptized. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Do you? Will you, show, will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Will you? With the whole church, let us now confess our historic faith using words of the Apostles' Creed. All those able, please rise. Together, as one body in Jesus Christ, we say, I believe in God the Father. may be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. You led Israel out of slavery, through the waters of the sea, into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of Jordan, Jesus was baptized and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. From it, we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Send your spirit now to move over this water, that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of the one cleansed by it. Raise him to new life and graft him into the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon him, that he may have power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, be all praise, honor, and glory, now and forever. Amen. Yes, oh, yes. With what name is your child baptized? Richard John, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O Lord, uphold Richard by your Holy Spirit, 
Give him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both this day and forevermore. Richard John, child of the covenant, you have been sealed in baptism by the power of the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. Richard John has been received into Christ's holy Catholic Church. Through baptism, God has engrafted him into the body of Christ and called him to share with us in the priesthood of Christ. I charge you, the members of this congregation, to nurture him and to love him and to assist him to be a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. The words of welcome were omitted from the bulletin, so repeat after me. We welcome you, John, oh, Richard. We welcome you, Richard, into the life and work of God's people. And we will walk beside you and with you and show you the way. Dan and Susan, we have a small gift for you and the baptismal certificate. Inside the gift, as you already know, is a book that we hope you will read to Richard at some point in the near future, keeping him informed and helping him understand the significance of this holy day. The peace of Christ be with you. Please share the peace with one another. Welcome you this morning to Memorial Presbyterian Church. A special welcome to any visitors among us. We hope and pray that our service is meaningful to your faith. If you have not yet signed the pew register, please take a moment now to do so, and if need be, pass the register down the pew. I call your attention to all of the announcements printed on the insert. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before your throne of grace with a sense of awe and reverence for the abundance of your goodness, for the abundance of your grace, for the magnitude of the love which you have bestowed upon us. We look at the world around us and we see the beauty of your hand and the beauty of creation, and we are awed by your majesty and your glory revealed there. In this Christmas tide, we look to a manger in Bethlehem and are overcome with awe and reverence for the child who lies there, within whom is the hope of the world. We praise you for the daily blessings which you bestow upon us. And we ask you during this season of Christmas and throughout all the year that you would lead us in our journey of faith, that you would shape us by the power of your Spirit, and that you would enable us to be in the world faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who strive for and show forth the presence of his kingdom in the midst of the world. We ask, Lord, for your wisdom upon leaders of this country and the leaders of nations of the world. Restrain those who are intent upon evil from their evil deeds. Encourage those who seek goodness and who seek the well-being of all people through the work of your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, for those who suffer in this day, that they may be comforted. We pray for those who sorrow and who mourn, that they might be reassured. We pray for those who struggle with illness, that they may be healed. We pray for those who feel alone, that they may know the gift of friendship and community. We pray for those who are lost, that they may know the gift 
of being found and enwrapped in your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Scripture reminds us, freely you have received, freely let us bring our tithes and our offerings to God.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And we pray as one, great God of power, we praise you for Jesus Christ, who came to save us from our sins. We thank you for the hope of the prophets, the song of the angels, and the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. We thank you that in Jesus you became flesh and dwelt among us, sharing human hurts and pleasures. Glory to you for your grace-filled love. Glory to you, eternal God, through Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, now and forever. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, I charge you this day to go into the world and to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your strength, and all of your soul, and to love your neighbor as your very own self. And may the grace, peace, and mercy of our God be upon you this day and throughout all eternity. Amen. Amen. 